Hi everyone! So this video is going to discuss making interactive activities in Google Slides to use in your teletherapy. I will of course specifically give some tips about the nuances of Google Meet if that's the platform that you're using. So I'm going to show a few activities that I've figured out and then I'm going to show you how exactly to make them. So this is an activity I've showed this Hungry Caterpillar thing before I downloaded this from Lesson Picks, but I was super excited. Last night I saw a webinar with Beth Poss and she gave this tip of putting a core board into your interactive activity. So that's one thing that my colleagues and I have struggled with brainstorming of how we're going to pull up a window to model AAC, a video window, and then um, a window with our activity and be able to share that with the student. So the really nice thing about Google Slides is that you can, of course, share the slide with your student so that you don't have to share screen control, but that once your student opens up the slide, they can be the one that moves around and manipulates the activity. So we have the AAC core board. You can have your book or whatever you want to show in your video window. You can be seeing your student. I'll show you how that gets pulled up at the end. And then um, you can be going along and interacting with the activity like that. So I'm going to show you the steps for that one. Another really simple thing that you don't have to have any subscriptions for, just um, to Google the image search, I did sort of this expressive language um, activity where a student would have to label an item of food or would tell you to move it to search for some characters that they like. So they could label orange. Of course, this could be on an AAC device. Um, you could be doing this as an articulation activity if you wanted to pick specific pictures with sounds. Um, and then they would say to move the ice cream and, oh, there's one of your characters. So some of the items have a surprise under them. And of course, if you're sharing this with your student, your student is the one that's controlling this, you want to make sure that they're not moving around these characters, right? So you can reset it for your next student. So there's a way to lock that those the surprise in place and then have the um, other parts be movable and interactive. Now this one, I won't explain because it's pretty similar to the bingo one, but I just thought this was a really cool idea. Again, downloaded this board from Lesson Picks so that this um, core vocabulary game specifically has the symbols that will match this, the AAC system you're modeling. So you can move your person, um, your game board piece, and then you can also have a highlighter that will move around for you to give support to your student. So now we're going to look at making this interactive activity with um, the AAC system next to it. So as I said, I got it off lesson picks. I'm showing this just because it's so simple. I didn't make this. Beth posted and it's shared on the website. So I'm going to download it as a PowerPoint fixed with tokens. Um, so the board will be fixed and the tokens are movable. So it's going to download here into PowerPoint but I want to put it in my Google Slides because I want everything in my drive. So I will save it to my Google Drive. And then when I open it in my drive, I'm going to say open with Google Slides. So then I can edit and manipulate it in there. So it's automatically going to come with all of these tokens, which of course you don't probably need all of them. So you could ask your students which ones they preferred, or you could just before your session, go ahead and um, clear some of them out. And of course, I'm going to make room to have my AAC board. So whatever system you're using, you just need a picture of it. So I got that core board, the Universal Core 48 off of Lesson Picks and um, saved it to my Google Drive so that when I go to add an image, I'll just grab it out of my drive and then I can align it to be right next to my activity. So we'll drag it over here and size it how you want. Um, you can make it a little bit bigger. I won't take too much time doing that. I also want to just show the highlighter that I made. Pretty simple. You just insert a shape. And choose whatever you want. I happen to do a circle and I will draw it to be a little bit bigger than my button 
and I'm going to make it transparent, a heavy border weight, and then a bright color. And you might need to, I had to do this before with the core board because I want the highlighter to obviously be on top. So you might have to go to the core board and order, send it to the back so that your highlighter sits right on top. And then there you go, easy as that. Now we'll look at making this really simple drag and drop one where you want some things to be locked and then some images to be movable and interactive. So how you're gonna do that is what you want locked, you'll make a slide of that and then you'll save it as a picture and that will become the background for your interactive slide. So how I made this one was I just Google image search right in slides, you can say insert an image and go to search the web. And I typed in each item that I wanted, resized it and ordered it. I did the same exact thing here. So you can see these images are movable. So something simple is you could just take a screen capture of this, save it to your drive. If you're making it in slides, it will be um, the correct proportions to be inserted into your other slide. If you want a little bit of a better quality, another way to do it is to say download, download as a PNG image and save it to your drive. So then when you go back up to your interactive part, you will go to change background, choose an image, and then wherever you saved it, you'll pull it out of that and select. So I found my image, I say done, and now it's become my background so you can see it kind of just fit in right there. If you wanted to make the background first and then insert your images on top, you could do that. Another way to use this background trick is you can search for a picture to use as a background. So let's say we're gonna put this slide in here and then I'm going to, really, I would be using a picture of my student. I'm using a Google image search here. Um, and then this could be a fun way to work on prepositions. So I could say, oh, look, you are on the slide. Now you're going down the slide. And again, if you're sharing this with your student and they're clicking around, they're not gonna be able to move the slide part, but they could move the picture part. So now we're gonna take a look at what this will look like when you're actually in a Google Meet. So we've talked about this before, when you're in your tab with your videos and then you click over to the activity you want, you can't see your student. So you just need to separate the tab so that you have two browser windows. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. The easiest way I'm finding right now is this Chrome extension, dual list, I think how you say it. Um, if you click that, it will give you options of how you wanna split your windows and it does it for you. So you can have your activity on one side and then you'll be able to see yourself and your student. And as I said at the beginning, um, my colleagues and I were really trying to think about how are we going to have so many windows pulled up? How am I gonna share two different windows? So this way you can just share your one browser window, your AAC system, and your activity would be um, right in that screen. And of course, you can just use that share feature um, to share it with your students so that you're not worried about screen control or anything more complicated like that. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if there's any videos that you'd like to see, and I'm happy to try to figure, figure things out.